call to order the work session on December 2nd, 2019. Welcome everybody. It's nice to see everybody together. All right, we only have one item on the agenda tonight. I'd like to remind council that staff will be pausing intermittently to answer any questions. Our work session to remind you item is discussion regarding changes to the city charter. City manager, Julie Arendahl presenting. Julie? Start over again. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have to talk louder and move that up close because the mayor is having difficulty. So the item we have for work session tonight was originally scheduled to be on our council retreat agenda back in October. There was some council interest in moving this conversation sooner than our rescheduled retreat in January. So the item tonight will be presented like a retreat agenda item. I'll have a brief staff presentation and then truly uh, the remainder of the time is available for council uh, discussion on this item. So the Arizona State Constitution grants specific authority for cities with a population of more than 3,500 to adopt a city charter. The provision recognizes the authority of locally elected decision makers to make local decisions and the ability of the level of government closest to the citizens to respond to the specific needs of their community. There are 19 cities in Arizona who have adopted charters, which are essentially the constitutions that set out the basic governing procedures for their local government. The Goodyear Charter was adopted by voters in 1988 and has been amended numerous times, including in earlier this year, 2019, to move to consolidated elections. However, the last full comprehensive review of the Goodyear Charter was not done, uh, the last time it was done was in 2004. So for our conversation this evening, we really wanna talk about scope and timing of a potential charter review. So when we talk about the scope of the review, we could look to do a limited review, which would be just to forward one or two questions to the voters, or, a comp or I should say, and or a comprehensive uh, overview of the full charter. There have been many potential items that have been identified by council and staff that we could cover in a full review. And typically you would see as a best practice that a local government would use a citizen ad hoc committee to do a full comprehensive review. For example, you can have the mayor appoint the chair with each council member appointing a member and in this case, perhaps retaining an experienced facilitator to lead that citizens committee um, through that project. When we talk about the timing of either a limited and a, or a comprehensive um, election, the earliest that we could go to the voters would be in May of 2020. And you can see on the chart that it's even then a very quick turnaround. We would have to notify the county of our intent to hold an election by December 21st of this year. And the final ballot language would have to go to the county by January 3rd of 2020. And that would be again to hold an election, uh, it would be an all, all mail-in ballot election in May of 2020. If we were to pursue a comprehensive charter review, staff would propose that we look to the March 9th, 2021 election. And the way that that schedule could look is we could do a citizens committee appointed in January of next year, uh, which is just a few weeks away now, um, have them review the entire charter and come before council in September with recommendations. Uh, we could then notify county of the intent to hold the election in October. Um, and again, final bank ballot language to the county at that time. There are other opportunities to go to the voters, such as the general or the primary election in 2020, and there's certainly pros and cons of using uh, a general election. Uh, you'll see that the, um, the pros are it's cheaper uh, to hold an election um, with the general or the primary as compared to an all mail-in ballot. Um, some of the cons is it tends to be a long ballot and it uh, tends to also be a less predictable election. When we talk about the cost of a special election all mail-in ballot, it would be about $125,000. And the citizens committee, including a facilitator, uh, we were talking about a proposed budget of about $40,000. And that would include allowing them to have um, meeting rooms throughout the community so they would meet in multiple locations um, and really uh, helping them you know, throughout this process. 
And so with that, again, it was really meant to be a, a brief overview, a talk about scope and timing. I know that there's some specific issues that council uh, may wanna speak about. So with that, I'm pleased to answer any questions, but, but really look forward to your conversation. Well, thank you for the review. All right, who would like to be first? Okay, Councilman Pazillo. What would be the, you have 125,000 on all mail-in. What would be the cost if we piggybacked on a uh, general election, what's the difference between the two? Because you say it's significantly less. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's about 67,000. How much? 67,000. So, it's about, so it's about half. So you save about half doing that. Okay. Are, how many of the, uh, uh, I guess, administrative issues that the clerk or staff is suggesting? Because I guess there's two approaches. I mean, if you have, if you put a whole lot of changes in there just to do administrative or cleanup, I'm wondering how that would actually end up going on the ballot. Will that be confusing by having so much? Or if you pick one or two really important things, is that more defined and makes it a little easier for the staff and, and the public to understand what they're actually voting for? So, you know, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's I guess a, it's one or half we does in the other. But I don't know how many administrative issues that staff is possibly looking at that they want to clean up. I mean, is it going through almost every section within it? Or is it five or six sections? Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Certainly. So if you do a limited scope, it would probably be one, two, three questions that you would forward to the voters, um, and they would affirmatively vote yes or no on those questions. If you do a full comprehensive charter review, you basically would then be forwarding an amended charter to the voters under one question, which would be do they approve or disapprove of the amended charter as brought forward. So in other communities I've seen, you have the citizens committee, they literally go through paragraph by paragraph, page by page, um, perhaps even reordering if, if it makes sense to the document to have it basically rewritten. Now, for transparency purposes, it's very important that the committee track and be able to communicate to council and ultimately the voters what exactly has changed. Now, if it's administrative changing pronouns, for example, from he's to she's to theirs, um, you know, that would be noted as an administrative change, but you wouldn't see a red line for each, for each word, for example. Um, other communities, again, you just see simply an amended charter that has a list of these are the substantial changes that were made, um, and then it's proposed as one question. I would think those substantial changes, if you're going through the whole piece, could be quite sizable for them to go through to decide yes or no on a vote. I, I'm just trying to think out loud here whether if you do something like that and they have to look through lines and lines of, of things on there, is that going to be more difficult, even though you have a, a committee that's going to try to explain that, what all those changes are? Is that going to be more difficult to the, and again, I don't know, this, I've never been through this, so this is all new to me as far as doing a comprehensive change, or whether it's, it's better to pick a few things of, of significance that they know clearly what those yes and no's are and go from there. And if that's the case, does it water it down if you go and try to save the 60000 by piggybacking? Because I would think if it's comprehensive, you can't do that. It's going to be too much on there that's going to get lost in a, a general or a, um, um, what, do you, what do you call it, a primary election. But if there's one or two, I'm not sure if that impact is great. So I don't have the experience. I don't know who's gone through there, but um, it would be kind of nice to get a general idea on how many of those administrative changes possibly be. Good job. Member Lauritano. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. One comment following that? up on that. Uh, a, even a limited question gets fairly complicated when you're drafting the ballot language. Um, so if you're going to go with that limited change, it really has got to be pretty narrow. As you probably recall, when we changed the, uh, the election day for right. solid election, there are four ballot questions uh, just to make that, you know, limited change on the charter. So if you start really picking off some of these administrative changes, you may be looking at multiple ballot, you know, questions in order to effectuate that change to the charter. So if you're going to go the limited route, it really does need to be fairly limited. Uh, and not a really administrative cleanup. Uh, really to accomplish that, you need to look at a more comprehensive. Uh, can we right. communicate um, to the public if there's a question, a number they can call and it, we can address the explanation? Is that allowed? Oh, there's certainly a large education effort that would go along um, with any charter change. So um, in a previous community, we had a, a comprehensive charter 
review. So it was a, a seven member committee. They rewrote the entire charter and then they also helped with the education effort with the community and it was passed successfully with I believe one question. So I know that you know it's every community is different and it's certainly going to be a, a council decision because there are pros and cons to doing a complete rewrite of your charter. It, as Rourke points out, it gives you more opportunity to come forward with one comprehensive clean document, um, you know, doing the Band-Aid approach. I mean, again, there's pros and cons. It's one question that is hopefully very clear, and you can deal with that one issue and move on. Um, but there are a number of, of administrative things, as I mentioned, in the, in the charter. Um, you know, everything from having uh, the clerk needing to print um, and bind documents that in today's um, you know, age, most would, would use electronically, just as an example. So I think that there's probably, um, you know, I, I think council has mentioned a few items that you've been interested in talking about, including council compensation um, and a number of other items. And so it, it really does come down to how many of those items, which are the most pressing, do you, do you want to look at one-offs? We could do one-offs every year for uh, you know, a while, but then when you look and weigh that against the cost of an election, right. you know, if you have five items and you do one each election, that also adds up. So I, I do think there's a lot of pros and cons, but education would be a large component of any charter review. Sherry, go ahead. When was the charter that we're operating under now last, not other than the terms, but when so was it last? The original charter was passed in 1988. The last comprehensive review was 2004. And we did have the charter change earlier this year to move to consolidated elections. So the last amendment was in 2019. Okay, so the last real big review was in 04. 2004. So we're 16 years out. <clears throat> uh, I'm really for the, I, I like what you said about having maybe one question with the substantial changes for the public. I think that's the easiest to follow rather than every there, here, change that the public's going to get confused group on. Them. Yeah, breaking it down to separate questions or separate questions every year, I think you're going to get some charter fatigue by the community going, why is this back? Why can't you just fix it? Because they're going to kind of wonder what we're doing if we try to piecemeal. If something obviously big to unforeseen came up, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem going back. But I think we try to do it all at once. I like the idea of having a committee. I think that's very well thought out and structured um, because I think it's important to get the citizens involved. And then I am really torn. I don't like spending the money, but would we be ready for the president? We wouldn't have it ready for the presidential election, would we? If we did the comprehensive um, evaluation, it would just compress their timeline. Because if you if you noticed the timeline of when we have to notify the county um, of the election, the notice to proceed, and then the actual ballot language is, is quite a bit in advance. Um, so the way we have it, if we went for the May of, I'm sorry, the March of um, 21, it gives the Citizens Committee about six, seven months to, to perform their work. Um, so you'd just be compressing that time if we tried to do a primary or general. Okay. Yeah, I, if we could get it with a consolidated election, perhaps not on the presidential cycle because that's going to be a long ballot and we're especially this year we're going to get lost you know at the very end that would be my concern but um I, I like to save the money i would prefer but it's too far out if we could get on with the governor you know that would be a better cycle if we could have gotten on with that one but i think that's too far out for us to get on so i'm not sure how to solve that problem i, I like saving the money not going on by ourselves because we've done that before and it doesn't really increase turnout it doesn't really help anything um so that would be nice to save the money. I, I just think then we need to make sure we spend the extra money if we do that to do the education. So I think we have to then understand that it's going to cost extra effort and extra money and finances to educate the public. Hey, go to the end of the ballot. This is important. But I think you'd save more money that way. You know, Like I said, my choice would have been, but we missed it and it's not in the right cycle. So, But I think it's a great job and a great thoughts. And I know you probably have a list of what we've been bringing up and talking about and I think that's great to have the citizens look at everything so well done and thank you very much Vice Mayor Fitt I echo most of Sherry's comments about the comprehensive review I think we all were in the city as residents when the last change was done um, it wasn't overly complicated it was pretty straightforward so I think um, I, I don't think there'll be confusion by doing a single document I think that makes the most amount of of sense, especially considering it's been 15 or 16 years since we've done it. I would be concerned if we tried to rush to get it done 
uh, for two reasons. One, we're going to rush the committee to take a comprehensive look at our charter. And as we've said publicly and in legal documents, the charter is our basically our constitution. Let's get it right. Let's not rush through it. And um, I would hate for them to be rushed, and then I would hate to rush the public education piece. Um, that will be so very important for the citizens to understand what it is that is being proposed that I don't want to shortchange that. And I'm, I'm honestly afraid next fall they're going to, they, we are going to be drowning in political anything. Mm -hmm. And I think any discussion or any attempt to try to educate prior to that or through that is going to be detrimental to our cause of trying to get a good um, uh, charter uh, change or good charter review, you know, passed by the by the voters. So um, I would prefer we do that. I would prefer we do comprehensive that we uh, push to the 21. And I, again, Chief Uncle says, let's spend the money. Let's get a ballot initiative that is Goodyear only, Goodyear focused, and then we can talk about it and get the get the word out. Anything? Molly? Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Um, I have two questions. Depending on what the, de the uh, thought is tonight, not necessarily the decision, mm -hmm. the thought is tonight of going forward, how would we um, <clears throat> or when would we have a discussion on what we would like to see mm -hmm. in the charter, the proposed uh, uh, thoughts on changes we would like to put on the table? Um, how would that work with with the citizens committee and everything else, which is fine. They don't have to buy in what we want to, to see, but we have lived this charter. We know the failings of this charter and we know we can do it a lot better. But in 1988, they didn't foresee some of the things that has happened to this council and the vacancies that we've had and uh, the way it's been handled, we've done exactly like the charter told us to do. And um, I just think there's a better way like some of the other cities do. And so um, if the decision or if the direction tonight was to move to a limited um, ballot in May of 2020, I really would need to know tonight and Rourke would need to know tonight what that specific item or items are because we would need to come back to council on the 16th of December um, to have that information prepared for you to be able to refer it to the ballot. Um, so if it's something very specific this evening, we would probably really wanna dwell into that. If the direction is to move to a more comprehensive review, I would come back to council in January and we would talk through the appointment of a committee, um, get any feedback from council. And so that would be one opportunity, but I also see that the facilitator we would bring in would meet with every individual council member to, um, in addition to staff, in addition to department directors, to gather all of the information possible about challenges um, with the charter ideas. Uh, we also have have, um, the Arizona League of Cities has a, a neat document where they compare all 19 charter cities um, and you can look down item by item and see how each city's charter um, you know compares and so there's going to be a lot of information available for the committee and I think that's why they need the time to go through it but council will have numerous opportunities to provide information at the beginning of the process and then of course it's council's decision at the end of the process which recommendations uh, to move forward to the ballot okay thank you Well, certainly, thank you, Mayor. Uh, certainly taking on this um, endeavor is, is no light matter. I mean, being the Constitution at all. And and it, it sounds like from our discussion that we are tending towards a comprehensive review. But I think it's sort of the elephant in the room is that there were some catalysts, you know, that were driving the conversation anyway um, regarding uh, why the, the charter discussion has come up. And so... I guess I'm just curious, um, do we feel that, that need to look at it overall comprehensively or is there, um, you know, particular issues that are of concern? Um, you know, I, I read through it for the last couple of days and the language isn't all that easy to read. And I think some of it you probably need a, an attorney to interpret exactly what things mean. But, um, you know, there was topics such as districting and 
and um, certainly the how the salary increases are done and um, and then I noticed that how you appoint a vacancy for council is different from the mayor. And so those are different topics that, that seem to be kind of uh, relevant. Um, curious about the $40,000 estimate for the committee, Did, would that include the education or is that just more facilitation and the, the committee? So that would include education, although it's not clearly identified at this point in time. We would uh, be very much tighten up that estimate if we were to come back in January, and, and basically we'd need a budget transfer as well um, because it will cross multiple fiscal years. And so we would come back with a much greater level of detail. Um, but yes, it would be um, that would include all costs um, associated with the committee and the education. Well, I guess it would determine how ur how urgent we felt that it was needed if we needed to. Um, just look at it holistically and have our uh, engaged citizens take a look and, and go through it uh, just because it's a good practice, then certainly I think that's important. But if we had other issues that we wanted to you know, expedite, then we'd have to consider that. Brandon? Yeah, thank you. So I do agree if we're going to go full comprehensive, we should take the time to make sure we do it right this time around, I thought that wasn't right at the time that they did it, but there's to take the time to do it, do it right and, and make sure you get all the right things lined up for it. And I guess to Laura's or Councilwoman Kano's point as well, I mean, I can think of a few things that I might want to change, but I'm not sure the rest of the council if they want one or two, one or two things to change or if it's a full comprehensive. It sounds like there's quite a bit in there administratively as well that would be better to do one full one full thing as opposed to the piecemeal portion of it so unless there's a reason why there's only one or one one thing that you can think of that we need to change I think it'd be better to go the full comprehensive to make sure we get it right right this time for this at, at this present time in our city's history as well so and then to your point and during that whole process if we go with the full comprehensive we're gonna have points in there where we're gonna be able to check and adjust or talk to the to count the subcommittee to make sure that at least our input is also in there as well. I don't know if I have a, I don't know, maybe I have an opinion on a few things, but I'm just curious to make sure that we're, that all of our, it's not going to be all that eight months of work and then we get to the last and where someone says, no, we don't like that or something like that. Um, just to, to speak to the process a bit more. Um, with a citizen's process, you would typically see all of the input coming in at the beginning, all of the information, let them go and do their work, and then they would come back and report out to council. But again, important to note that, and just use the districting as an example. So say that the committee came back and, and they said, yeah, we're going to leave districting in at 150000 as it is currently. Um, but council felt strongly that that was not you know, what they saw as the best interest, even though they received the feedback from the beginning. I mean, council does have the, the final say so, um, and have been elected to make that decision on what to refer, refer to the ballot. But my job and the facilitator's job would be to make sure that they heard council voices on that subject at the beginning of the process so that they can weigh that as they're, as they're moving through. Um, I don't know that I see a check-in in the middle of that process because I, I think that you typically best practice would let them yeah. do their work with their information. <laughs> but certainly this would be a council process, so. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure that their time is going to be put to the best use so when they go through it, we give them eight months to do it, <laughs> that they come back with a, a good rock for us all to, to look at. So other than that, yeah, I think I'm on board with the full, the full, the full, um, portion of the committee, the full, the full review, but as long as it's done within the full amount of time that we talked about, so that'd be uh, March of 2021. Okay. That's correct. We'd be aiming for the March of 2021 election, which means that we would need to notify the county of our interest in October of, of 2020. So it actually probably will go by pretty quickly. And that election was, there's no, none of us are on there. So it's just, it's just the, it's just this as the only thing on that ballot. That's correct. It would be an all mail in ballot, and this would be the, the question thing. on the ballot. It would be our last, that type of election, because we're going, that'll be the last one until we get on cycle with everybody else. 
We have the ability to do special elections in, in the case of uh, vacancies, for example. There's still the opportunity to do special elections. It's just that when we're not partnered on a ballot, we are paying the full cost of that election. Okay. All right. Thank you. Joe wanted to speak again. Joe? You know, if you're going to do a comprehensive, I, I think it's real important. If you try to do it in August, it's too, it's too quick. You can't do it. If you wait till November, it's going to be so contentious that you're going to lose all your education between the state and the federal arguments. So even though I'd love to save money, the problem is, is I don't think it's viable for November. So the date you have. My only concern, uh, and I prefer to do it all at once. I agree that's the easiest way. But you have to have, if you're going to have one yes or no vote on there, you could have a lot of things in there that if you don't explain it thoroughly, that might say, I don't like that piece, so I'm going to say no. That's the risk you run when you put a lot of things into one area. So in my view, comprehensive is probably the way to do because you want to keep going back and piecemealing. But at the same time, you want to make sure you have thorough enough education and a buy-in from the members that you put the committees you put together so that one little thing in there doesn't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. So you got to have enough education period of time to pull this off, in my view. So I kind of think the comprehensive is the way to go. I want to make sure that we get the education. Everybody thoroughly understands what's in that change. Bill, would like to speak again? I, we're not locked into whatever time frame that is. If we say we want to refer it to March of 21, that come whatever the d October, mm -hmm. whatever that October date is, if the committee feels the, that they haven't done enough you know, the work hasn't been done yet. We can wait until May, right? So we, we're in control. We, the city, are collectively in control of the time frame. So I don't think we should be pressured by an artificiality that exists through this timeline process, that we're really in control of it and allowing the citizens to do it. And I agree, uh, Joe, that it is a risk. It's a one question, yes or no, up or down on all of it. Um, but it is the it is the charter. It is the constitution by which we're going to live, and future councils will live by. So, um, we should make sure that we do it right. We educate the people. We take the time to get it done. Um, in the military decision making process, there's the theory of rush to failure, that we're going to rush so quickly through it that we're going to fail. We don't want to do that. No process has to be timelined that way. Um, and that's the nice thing about this is we're in complete control of that timeline. So we can push the push, push our foot on the accelerator or we can take our foot off the gas and, and, uh, and make it go. So I'm, I'm very comfortable moving forward and I realize it's a huge risk. It's a thumbs up or thumbs down on however many items. But again, I go back to 2004. Um, I think there were some people that weren't necessarily happy with the districting change from 65,000 to 150. They will never be on that one, so we will, that will be continuous. <laughs> right, but the charter change passed, even though there was an element in there that not everybody was happy with. So um, I think we have to give a lot more credit to the voters than, than perhaps we do, and, and uh, we'll go, go for the best, because the charter is, that's what we have. Well, I just remember, you finished? I just remember voting on that 150,000 people. Mm -hmm. I remember that meeting specifically and why we did it. And, um, and I have heard conversation out there that people are very happy at large um, that we're doing at large because in their estimation, each neighborhood, each section of our city, we've been doing things. Mm -hmm. When we get to that point of going the other, we're gonna be very competitive with each other for our communities, and that's not always so easy. This way, mm -hmm. uh, you m uh, walk among your constituents in this city, and they say to you, great job, love what you're doing. Really, and so it does open that um, until we're more mature. But, you know, we have all these committees. We train and they come out, and they're ambassadors and experts on it. Yep. So I don't have a fear that uh, the public in Goodyear, Goodyear's well-educated, uh, well-involved, they're taking ownership of their city. They have all the good, positive signs of doing well uh, and probably better than ever because we're so transparent. I think you're in focus is another way to get some of this out. Um, and I really, I think what we, 
I'm interested in is so on a staff side, on your side, what things need to be changed that, that really are elements that never were changed? Maybe you're kind of leaning towards your decisions on those, but that, so I think that is really important to us. We don't do that, we're policy. Uh, but, and so the part of the charter that handles staff is important to stake owners and, and uh, citizens. So that's a whole different picture from our policy. And, and then a policy for the council, our policy on our behavior. Okay, so we've never done anything like that in that. I wasn't gonna mention it, but we don't really have any strict guidelines, or not strict guidelines, but conversation guidelines. So you know those things, hey, that, you know, we're allowed to do that, and we as a group are gonna say that's okay, and so we aren't contentious with each other on subject matters. We've never done that. And uh, it's just a set suggestion to throw out that we want to have a conversation among us and come to some consensus of how there's certain things that we handle between us all and actually what we do. So I have, uh, I have trust in the public, but uh, there's no use rushing into this. Um, we already know we have errors in some of it. We already know we have cleanup, right? <laughs> City clerk told me that. <laughs> so we already know that's there. And taking a little bit longer to develop what we really need is probably the best. That's my view. So any other comments? I have a quick question. Yes, Sherry? When we do get this through, um, I, I know a lot of it is administrative. That is not the basically the substance of areas. Do other cities basically take out some of that administrative stuff from their charter? Because a lot of that copying stuff doesn't seem like that should be really a constitutional level issue. I, I could be wrong, I don't know. No, that's a great point. Um, in the neighboring community, some of the exercise was truly looking if this is the constitution of the city, um, there are some administrative things in the document that perhaps are better served by ordinance as compared to the constitution of the city. So that is part of um, in my experience, that analysis is, and, you know, if you're going to remove something, um, you know, from the, the realm of the charter, and again, transparently, you know, saying, okay, this is already in a city ordinance, or this would be served better in a city ordinance um, than in the constitution of, you know, our community. So that is uh, something that, that has been done in, in other communities. So as technology changes, we're not bound to 2019 technology by having to do another charter, that'd be great. And just for an example, I don't know if you recall, um, you know, there's there's things in the charter that talk about, you know, department directors and departments. And I mean, there's some very um, administrative type items in that document. And this document from the league, and I'm, I'm pleased to share it with council if you're interested, it is, it is interesting to see which things are in different city charters. A lot of them came off the same template. Um, so there's a lot of similarities, but there's, there's some where it, it varies greatly. Could you, could you send that out? Because I think that'd be interesting. It would help keep yeah, us on I'd track be glad to. What now, I, sh I should note that there is at least one error when it talks about the Goodyear Charter. So I won't claim it to be a, a perfect document. The last update from the league was in 2015, uh, but it is still a valuable document for what it's worth, even though it might not be perfect. It is two-sided, but um, and it's in a nice table format, so you can can read through it pretty easily. Would you? I know you want to send it out electronically, but yep. I know there's a couple of us who'd like to see it on paper. We'll do both. We'll put it in your mailboxes and also send it. Easier to read. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, clearly, exactly. clearly, I printed it as well. So. Here with my laptop, but yeah, uh, that's yeah. what I was. But it is easier to work with if you have it in front of you. You know, it's easier than trying to find the little tool so you can outline it or circle around it, at least in my case. And, so. and you know, it is interesting also when you talk about 19 charter cities. I mean, there are a number of cities that you might be surprised don't have charters. Uh -huh. um, our neighboring city of Surprise does not have a charter. Um, town of Gilbert does not have a charter. So it is an interesting as you go through and you're talking about best practices, we would want to look you know, even just beyond the charter cities because there may be things that we like about another community um, that we may somehow incorporate. So it really is a, a broad project, um, but you know, I think the goal would be to have a more easily readable, perhaps even better organized um, document at the end of the day. So as they leave this meeting tonight and they start thinking of things that 
they really would like. We're going to have a process where they can relate that sentence or relate that to you. Um, you know what I'm saying is because, you know, it's fine here, but once you get behind closed doors and we go home, you start thinking of something or you talk to your neighbor. Um, and maybe a good idea for us to make our list, that, are, and it could be a list of citizen complaint, you know, or, or a list of what we think it would be a better process. So if we could have some arrangement like that, that, that we would continue as a council will put that in, and then that gives the committee also something else to look at if it isn't, but I have a feeling it's all going to be in there. But And also, um, I encourage if you want to start thinking about who would be, if, if we're going to use the Citizens Committee to start considering who you would um, like to consider appointing, we would use an ad hoc committee. Um, and so I think that, you know, again, what I've seen successful is that you have each of you uh, to create a committee of seven. It's a nice, manageable group. And if they're really invested in the process, can, right. can get a lot done. Good. Any other questions on this? I'll take an email. Okay. I'm sorry. What? No, I said I'd, I'd take an email. Email. Yeah. Yep. He has good eyes. That's well, I can I can go from 12 font to 14 font on my computer, make it real easy to read. That's true, <laughs> especially with your job. It works out much better. Any other questions before we close this? Okay. Uh, so we're going to have a regular meeting. Uh, the next meeting will be a work session following this. So I'm going to dismiss this, and we have a regular meeting tonight, it's too. CFD. So... Oh, CFD. CFDs. You know I can't go through this without making a mistake. All right, so let's adjourn this meeting because we have a CFD immediately. And it begins at 6 o'clock, so that gives you, you still begin at 6 o'clock? That's uh, what it Mayor, says. we could actually do this, the CFDs right now in this okay. setting and then right. take the break before the regular meeting. Good. I guess the work session follows at 6 o'clock. All right, so I'm going to dismiss this meeting and then let's call the other meeting to...